This video will uh, cover the sheep heart anatomy and relate this to human heart anatomy. Now, sheep have a four-chambered heart just like humans. And so by studying the, the anatomy of the sheep heart, you can learn about the anatomy of the human heart and how the heart pumps blood throughout the body and keeps individuals alive. However, the heart dissection is probably one of the more difficult dissections you will do. And part of the reason it is so difficult to learn is that the heart is not perfectly symmetrical. And because it's not perfectly symmetrical, you may have difficulty determining what is dorsal, what is ventral, what is left, or what is right. And by finding blood vessels, this will directly relate you to being able to orient the heart correctly and figure out which side you're looking at. Now the heart is also difficult because the fatty tissue that surrounds the heart can block the openings to the blood vessels. And this means that you really must experience the heart and the heart dissection by holding the heart in your hand and feeling your way to find the openings. When you first remove your heart from the bag, you will see a lot of fatty tissue covering the heart. It's usually a waste of time to try to remove this yellow fatty tissue. Um, also, in the packaging process, the, just the packaging and preserving of the heart can cause it to be misshaped. However, if you're lucky, the heart will be nicely preserved and you'll be able to tell the front, which is the ventral side of the heart, by a few key structures. One of those is going to be this large pulmonary trunk that extends from the top. And then the other will be these flaps, these oracles that cover the top of the atrium. Uh, now, what we can do is by grabbing some colored pencils, we can help you identify and mark your blood vessels and orientate yourself on the heart. Now, the front of the heart has a curve running down the entire front side, whereas the back is much flatter. And so the first thing we're going to show you is the coronary sinus that runs across it at an angle. And we're going to kind of color that in right there that you can see that coronary sinus. In addition to that, that pulmonary trunk is located at the front of the heart and it enters at an angle. So we're going to use our fingers and we're going to probe around the top of the heart and we're going to find the four major blood vessels uh, at the top of the heart and that's going to be the pulmonary trunk, the aorta, the superior vena cava, and the pulmonary vein. And we will use colored uh, pencils to mark these locations. Okay, so this is a diagram of the front of the heart, and we can see the oracle. And here we have that pulmonary trunk that we were speaking about on the previous slide. And once you find the pulmonary trunk, the aorta will be situated just a little bit behind it, and it may be covered in a lot of fat, so you'll have to poke around, stick your finger around, until you find that opening. And if you push your finger all the way down through there, you're going to feel the inside of the left ventricle. If you feel the left ventricle wall, you're going to find that it is much thicker compared to if you push your finger down through the pulmonary trunk and you feel the right ventricle. And that has to do with the pulmonary circulation of the right side of the heart going to and from the lungs only, where on the left side of the heart we have that systemic circulation where the left side of the heart pumps to the rest of the body. Now we can go ahead and put colored pencils in there and mark these two um, blood vessels and you'll kind of see that they crisscross one another. Now once we have marked these two blood vessels, we're going to take the heart and we're going to turn it around so we're looking at the back or the dorsal surface. And there are two more major blood vessels that enter the heart that we want to mark. On the left side, we're, we will find the opening of the pulmonary vein as it enters the left uh, atrium. The uh, superior vena cava will enter the right atrium and so it will be on the right side. The problem you may have is that in many of our preserved hearts the heart is cut at this point and so you may not actually see the blood vessels you may only find the openings but once you find those openings do mark those with colored pencils so therefore you won't mistake them for something else. Now that we have marked these blood vessels let's discuss how to identify the right and the left side of the heart. Now if we look closely, we'll see that right there, that interventricular sulcus or that colon, uh, coronary sulcus that we spoke about on the previous slide. 
the tip of the heart is called the apex. And so this half that includes the apex or this pointed end of the heart is the left side. Now if you'll hold the heart, you can confirm this by squeezing each half of the heart. The left half will feel much firmer and more muscular than the right side. And again, this is because the left side has that systemic circulation pumping to the entire body except to the lungs. Now that part is going to be the right side of the heart uh, performing that pulmonary circulation. So you should be able to feel a difference between the right and the left sides of the heart. Now here we have just a diagram confirming what we have seen so far with that pulmonary trunk, uh, the aortic arch. Uh, we were uh, seeing the aortic arch cut in such a way that we were able to label the brachiocephalic uh, artery. We had that superior vena cava. Remember that this is a four-chambered heart, so we have our atrium, we have our ventricles. But so far, that's what we have looked at. So uh, you use a scalpel and you make an incision at that superior vena cava area up here at the top. And then you uh, make the incision going down from the right side so that you can cut open and you can see this section of the heart. Now once you have done this, the first thing you want to do is you want to orientate yourself again based on right and left. And when you have a view of the heart, such as you have here, you want to look at the thickness of the heart wall. And what you'll notice is the right side is much thinner than the left. And so we say the left side of the heart is twice as thick as the right side. And again, that's because of that uh, systemic circulation that we have going on on the left side of the heart versus that pulmonary circulation we have on the right. So remember that when you work with a specimen, you're dealing with the specimens right and left and not your own. And the very first thing you want to do is to identify your right from your left. Now once you have done this, do notice that our top chambers are called the atrium. Now these are called oracles on the outside and they're called the atrium on the inside. So we have our right atrium and we have our left atrium. Our bottom chambers are the ventricles. So we have our right ventricle and our left ventricle. In addition to this, we will have some valves that separate our atria from our ventricles. And we can see one clearly marked right here. So we have our atrium, we have a valve, and we have our ventricle. On the right side of the heart, this is the tricuspid, tririte. On the left side, this is the bicuspid. Now they're called tricuspid and bicuspid for the number of cusps that come together for closing the valve. Now rarely will you hear this valve being called the bicuspid valve. It is much more commonly called the mitral valve. On both valves, there are strings that pull the valve shut. These strings are called cordae tendinae. The muscle that they are attached to that pulls the string shut is called the papillary muscle. So we have our atria, our ventricles, on the right side we have our tricuspid valve, on the left side we have our mitral valve. The strings are called the cordae tendinae. The muscle they are attached to is called the papillary muscle. The wall that separates the atrium is called the inner atrial septum. The wall that separates the ventricles is called the inner ventricular septum. Here we can see, again, first thing I want to do on this picture is to orientate myself. Uh, thin wall, so right side, thick wall, left side. The strings, cordae tendinae. So here I have my uh, mitral or bicuspid valve. I would have my tricuspid here. One of the things that I do like to do on lab practicals is to take a probe and run a probe to identify the other two valves. And so if I was to run a probe and I was to run it up through like this right here, what I would see is that this valve right here would be my aortic semilunar valve. And this blood vessel that uh, my pointer would go through would be the aorta. Likewise, if I was to run a probe up this way, I would be able to run my probe up through that pulmonary 
semilunar valve up into the pulmonary trunk? And this is a very common question that will be asked on sheep hearts. So you do want to look, and if we're on the left side and we're running it up through, that's going to be that aortic semilunar valve going up into the aorta. If it's coming from the right side of the heart and it's going up into a blood vessel, that's going to be the pulmonary semilunar valve going up into the pulmonary trunk. Now this one isn't clearly labeled, but I did do the diagram this way to show you what could be asked. Now because I use some large terminology, I added these last two slides that show you the words that I've been using and how they are spelled. So hopefully this will just help you confirm that terminology that has been used on the slides. And I also included this slide because again when you're looking at a cross section of your heart you want to orientate yourself first thing on what is left and what is right. And you'll notice that on this one here we have the right side because we have a thin uh, wall and here we have a thick wall so left side and it's very easy for a professor to pick one side or the other uh, just to confuse the students because the first thing we want you to do is to check the thickness of those walls.